This is our first session on Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, and in a sense, it's going to be a session on a 2, 11 to 22, because I want us to see this entire unit and what follows up through verse 22 in the big picture before we see the details. So, Father, as we try to get the big picture of what Paul is doing in the next larger units, I pray that you'd guide us so that we we Gentiles and any Jewish people who are listening would understand that salvation is from the Jews and that you had a long history of working in a saving way among the Jewish people differently than the nations. And now that Christ has come, the gospel has spilled over the banks of Israel to all the nations, and Paul is dealing with that here. Help us to see it, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember back in the first part of chapter 2, Paul said, And you, you Gentiles, were dead in trespasses and sins. And then he adds, Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the, and the mind, and were by nature children of earth, like the rest of mankind. In other words, that unit right there was intended to unite Jew and Gentile as children of wrath. We're all in it together. We're all desperately lost and under the judicial wrath of God together. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, and the us there is all together in Christ now, even when we were dead, that is, you were dead, we were dead, made us alive together with Christ. And then you Gentiles, be sure you know you're included. You have been saved by grace. So he's already dealt with the you and the we of Gentile and Jew. So when he picks this up again now in uh, verse 11 to 22, watch what he does. Once you get the big picture, we're going to pass over dozens of details that we'll be back to in the sessions to come. Just get the big picture. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles, now he makes it explicit, right? He didn't use the word Gentile in the previous verses, but now he makes it explicit. You Gentiles, not Jews, Gentiles, different, non-Jewish people in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you, you Gentiles, were at that time separated from Christ, the Messiah alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in Christ, in Christ Jesus, you, you Gentiles, who once were far off from all these realities, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So he's setting it up to remind the Gentiles that in terms of their relationship to God and Christ and hope and covenants and salvation through Israel, they were cut off. They were not near. But now everything is changing. And then comes this unit, which explains how that change happened. For he himself is our peace, who was made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, Jew and Gentile, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body. Both had to be reconciled to God because they were both children of wrath. Even though they were Jews, they were cut off from Christ. So were Gentiles. But salvation is coming through Israel. And that's what he's drawing out here. 
us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility between Jew and Gentile and man and God. And he came and preached peace to you, you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. We both had to be reconciled. We both needed peace between us and God and with each other. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. You can't can't miss this, right? Us both, the two, one new man, us both. Get rid of the hostility. You were far off. We were far off. We both access. This is all about Jew and Gentile being reconciled to God and reconciled to each other. And then comes this final unit. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens. You Gentiles are no longer strangers and aliens. So he's, he's speaking to a Gentile church, and he's evidently, while he was with them and now continuing, teaching them about how salvation comes through Israel, and therefore they can't just abstract Christ from his role as a fulfillment of all the Old Testament promises. Rather, he wants them to understand how their salvation came through Israel. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, which they were cut off from, and members of the household of God, and built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together. So Jew and Gentile built together into one dwelling place for God in the Spirit. Not two houses, a Gentile house for God to dwell in, and a Jewish house for God to dwell in, one house. So there you have the three units, 11 to 13, 14 to 18, 19 to 22. You were cut off. You've been brought near. You are full fellow citizens. There is no split between Jew and Gentile anymore when it comes to being the people of God, the saved in Christ people of God. So just a few comments about why would Paul deal with Jewishness in this way, writing to a Gentile church? Remember what Jesus said in John 4. Jesus said to the woman at the well, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem you'll worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We, we Jews, worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. Now that is, perhaps for some, a very offensive statement. But God has ordained from the election of Abraham on to, in a special way, deal with the Jewish people in a saving way. And when the Messiah came, then it spills over to all the nations. So here are the privileges that Paul is thinking about. Romans 9, they are Israelites. To them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, the promises, and to them belong the patriarchs and from their race. This is the topmost blessing. From their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, the Messiah, who is God over all blessed forever. So Christ is now for every man. Everyone who believes is in Christ. But Christ came from the Jews to fulfill all these promises. And we Gentiles become saved and safe and part of the family of God by being grafted into all of this. Here's the way Paul puts it. This is the last text we'll look at. Galatians 3, 7 to 9. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. Why would that matter? Because the promises given to Abraham are the promises of the blessing of salvation. If you're not a son of Abraham, you don't have any salvation. What? Listen, keep going. 
and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, declare them righteous and acceptable by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham when he said this to Abraham, in you, Abraham, shall all the nations, that's us, wherever you live, whatever ethnicity you're a part of, whatever nation, whatever family, this is you. If you are in Christ, in you, all the nations will be blessed. Conclusion. So then, those who are of faith, meaning in Christ, the Messiah, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The whole point is God is ready, willing, indeed pursuing through the Great Commission to receive every ethnicity, every education, every status, every class into his salvation by one means alone. And it's not Jewishness anymore. And it's not Gentilishness that excludes. It is faith in Christ. So that's what Paul is doing as he begins now this amazing passage. And we have so many details to look at. In Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, he is showing how the individual approach that he took in verses 1 to 11 to say that you are individually saved by grace through faith now can be interpreted as, well, how do Gentiles as a whole relate to the history of Israel?